okay let's see if things is in the right order okay since we we are live right now we are live right now Okay, now just need to share my screen. So guys, you are welcome to FSLS Forex Trading School. Today, I'm gonna walk you guys through uh, what is trend. Actually, uh, this class today, I'm gonna show you what is trend, how can you identify trend in the market. So this word, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can actually get that done from your site right there. Uh, so let's see if students are getting, okay. You are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. You are welcome to the class. And then what is the name right there? What is the name? What is the name right there? Guys, you are welcome. Okay, we are about to start the class right now. So I'm just gonna put the screen right now on the whiteboard so you guys can see everything I'm going to try to explain this class today. So before I start the class, I want to know from you guys, if you are joining, if today's your first time, you can comment right here on your YouTube channel. And then if you are in the or application, no class direct, then you can give a comment. So, Mr. Mayiwa, you are welcome. You are welcome to the class. If today is your first time, you can unmute your speaker and please respond. Is today your first time? Is today your first time? Is today your first time? Hello, is today your first time? Yes, Hello. Sir. Okay, okay, you're yeah, welcome. So, where are you from? Where's your location? I'm from South Africa. South Africa, okay, you are welcome. You are welcome. It's nice Thank to you have too. you right here. You are welcome. So, we do hold this class now every Tuesday, Thursday, and the Saturday of every week. We do hold class now, and in this class now, we do uh, educate you no know, forest traders or whatever market to trade, provided it's a market based on price speculation. We do you know educate traders on how technical analysis, fundamental analysis, you no know, sentiment analysis, and all branches of you no know, analysis which can make you become a better trader. So uh, today, what we're going to be discussing about what we're you know, talking about is uh, the that is what's called you no know, the key levels 
key levels on your trading chart, how can we identify key levels? So key levels, okay, I'm gonna make this uh, a board line so you guys can figure out, can see that properly on your chart, key levels. Key levels. So what is key levels? What do we understand by key levels? Key level simply makes you no know, a point of interest, a point of interest on our trading chart. You no know, key level simply represents maybe a support or a resistance on our trading chart. You no, know, these are point of interest in which you no know, the buyers or the sellers you no know, have high tendency to move the market, maybe in a breakout or maybe in a reversal of trend. So this is what is being called our key levels. So uh, I'm gonna show you how you can you know, implement your key levels on the trading chart, how you can implement the key levels as you know, support level and as resistance level. So the first thing I wanna you know, discuss about is why do we need to implement key levels on our trading chart? You know, key levels on our trading chart act as a boundary as a point of interest. So when we are trading, we know the right places whereby we can get into a trade, the right places for us to look out for trade opportunity on our trading chart. So these are the you know, major levels that is a resistant or the support zones on our trading chart. So I'm gonna be showing you guys know how you can implement the key levels that is your support and resistance or zone. So take note, key levels also you no know, simply means you no know, resistance, you no know, zones on our trading chart. Resistance, you no. Know, uh, trading chart and then support zone on our trading chart. No, at resistance, it means the sellers are willing to sell downward, where at support, the buyers have high tendency, no, to buy up. So at this resistance right there, no, we can refer to it as the supply zone. Uh, the supply zone, whereby at the support, we can refer to it as this zone, as uh, demand zone. Demand zone, a point whereby you no know, buyers are willing to move the trend upward, whereby the buyers are willing to buy upward. So I'm going to show you on my trading chart right now. Here on my trading chart, you no, know, I have a chart of the British pound standing paired against the Japanese yen, and then I'm going to be showing you guys how you can implement you know, the key level structures on our trading chart. So the first thing is, where are the right places for us to implement our key level structures on our trading chart? So are uh, the swings high and the swings low? So I know you guys know you are familiar with trend movement, whether we have a movement upward, pullback, movement upward, pullback, low. These are swings, right A are swings. We have a swing right A, swing I right A, swing low right A, swings I right A, swing low. So at this point, these are the zone whereby we are interested to construct our key levels, that is our support and the resistance zones on our trading chart. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can mark out these zones on our trading chart and then how we can implement this uh, on our chart. So first thing right there is, let's figure out on this chart of this British pound sterling against the Japanese yen. Here's the British pound sterling of the no, a chart of the British pound sterling against Japanese yen. So here's a chart, and I always emphasize on this is whenever you are trading, you have a chart and then you don't implement your support and resistance zones, that's your key levels on your chart, it's an incomplete chart. A chart without no key level structure is not a complete chart. So before you can actually you know, implement trades in the right place and then look out for trade opportunity at the right place and not at the wrong place. You have to implement your key level structures, like your support and resistance zone properly the right way on your trading chart. So right here, I have a trend right here. This is a chart of the British pound sterling against the uh, Japanese or uh, yen. And then you can see right here, this market had been you no know, and a movement right from this region right here. You can see how uh, the movement right here, up, you no, know, down, up, down. So what I need to do right now is to implement my key level structures on my trading chart right there. So the first thing I need to do right now is look out for you no know, the swings high and the swings lows of this currency pairs. And then if you want to construct your key level, the best time frame to use is the daily chart. There's a daily chart that's the best you no know, chart to use. Uh, some traders prefer to use the lower time frame, but remember the rules which says the more you go higher on the higher time frame, the more valid, you no know, strong signals you have. So the best zone to construct your key level structures, it's on the you no know, higher time frame. That was the daily time frame. So here's the daily time frame, daily chart of the British pound sterling against the Japanese yen. 
And then right here now, I want to identify swings high and swings low of this currency pair because the swings highs and the swings lows, these are the right place we need to implement our key level structures. That's our horizontal lines to identify a support or resistance for a trend. So here on this chart, we can see we have a series of a high swings right here. I got a high swings right here, high swings right here, high swings right here, a low swings right here, high swings right here, a low swings right here, a low swings right here, and I got a high swings right here, low swings right here, low swings right here, low swings right here, and then I got a high swings right here, high swings right here, a low swings right here, low swings right here. I got a high swings right here, low swings right here, and a low swings right here. So what I need to do right now is to start you no know, implementing my key level structures on my chart, whereby I can construct you no know, a swings eye right here, whereby I can construct this swings eye right here to this zone right here. This swings I, these are the zones I want to construct to identify my key level structures. That's my support and resistance zone on my trading chart. So this is what I do right now. So the first thing I want to do right now is I have to pick you no know, my horizontal line right there. So if you are using the trading view, it is the same no way you're gonna implement your key level structures the way you do on the MetaTrader 4 or the MetaTrader 5. So no matter you no know, the trading software you are using, it's the same process. So what I need to do right now, ma'am, I'm uh, for this uh, class, I am making use of the MetaTrader 4. So what I need to do right now to implement the right support and resistance zone on my trading chart, I just need to click right here, that is a resistance line right here, then I start you no. Know, try to get your swings high and the swings low of this currency pace right here. So the highest swings I got right here, you can see right here, I got a high swings right here, a high swings right here, and there's something I want to point out to you guys you know, as a day trader, or if you want to implement your key level structures on the daily time frame, what you need to put into notice is you can you know, make sure your key level structures can cover a period of one to three years on your chart. So, for example, right now, this is the year 2020, and uh, I want my you know, key level structures to extend right from maybe two, three years. But right here on my chart, I got you know, this today. Right now, today is uh, 2nd of June. 2020, right? And then I want to you know, implement my key level structures to carry the highest swings high of this currency pairs of the British pound sterling against the Japanese yen. So before I continue this class, I just want to ask you know, from the members of the class if you guys can actually see my screen, if you can hear my voice before I continue for the class, okay? So I just need to have the students in the class right now. So can you guys hear my voice? Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Yes, I can. Okay. okay, okay, good. Okay, good. So right now, what I need to do now is not to construct to connect my key level structures that the swings high and the swings low right here. So I got the highest swings on this currency pairs right here. There's the highest swings right here. I got a high swings right there. I got a high swings right there and a high swings right there. So what I need right here now is to put into consideration the latest, the crudest, process swings high or swings low to the you know, latest point of price action. So this is what I need to do right now. I just need to implement my key level structure to catch these swings right here. Catch these swings right here. This is the highest swings high to the current price action zone right now on my trading chart. So I have no initiated a key level structure right here, a resistance zone right here on my trading chart right there. So what I need to do next now is to look out for another swings eye right here on this chart. So I need to you know, pick my real horizontal line right there and then look for another key level structure right there. You can see I have a series of you no know, swings eye right here. You can see I got a swings eye right here. I got a swings eye right I got a swing eye right here. Here's a swing eye right here. I got a series of the swing eye, swing eye, swing eye right there. So what I need to do right now is to implement my you no know, horizontal line to connect this swing eye at this zone right here. I want to connect this swing eye right here and then all these swing eye right there. So what I need to do right now is just to implement my key level structure, which lies right here, to connect this thing. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see properly on the chart. You can see there's a swing eye right here. I connected the swing eye to this zone right here. And then the next swing eye of this candle formation right here, which is like a, a bearish pin bar, I connected it to this up edge of this swing eye right there. So what I need to do next now is to look out for another swing eye on this currency piece or this, or this or process swing slow. So what I need to do right here now is, you guys can see right here, I got you no know, 
a swing high right here and I got another swings high right here and then there isn't any swings high at this zone right here so I can only connect this structure right here as a resistance zone so what I need to do right now is what I need to do now is just to pick my horizontal line right here and then connect this swings high right here now connecting this swing high right here now you can see I have connected these two points I mean these three points right here I got a first swings high right here another swings high right here and another swings high right here it means I have connected our three strings right here, the first swing, second swing, and then the third swing right there. So what is what I mean? There's a swing right here on my chart, the first swing, second swing, and the third swings. So what I do right now is I know implemented my key level line to connect these swings at this zone right here. There's a swing right here, I got a swing right here, I got a swing right here. Whereby this is a resistance for this strain right here, a resistance for this strain right here, and then a resistance for this strain right here. So I am trying to connect the swing right here as a resistance zone, whereby the swing's low right here, I can connect it as what? As a support, because I have a rejection two times right here. So this zone right here, I can tag this zone as a support, as a support. So right here, I got a support, a support right here. And the right here at the top, I can tag this place as a resistance, okay? As a resistance on my trading chart. So this is a idea of what we are trying to do on the chart right there. So if you are just getting to the class, do not get confused, no. It's very, very simple. What you need to do right here is try to connect the swings high and the swings low of this currency pairs right there. So now I'm going to, connect the next swings high and the swings low right here. I got another swing low right here. And then here's a swing low right here. You can see the swing low right here of this currency pierce right here. I'm gonna show you guys with my highlighter right here. I got a swing low right here, a swing low right here, a swing high right here, a swing high right here. I got a swing low right there. So I am trying to connect this series of a swings high and a swings low right here. You can see right here, this swings high right here is this resistance right here. This thing's right is a resistance, and this thing's right here is a support. Right here, it's a support, and the right here, it is support for this rally upward right here. And the right here, it's a resistance for this upward rally, and the right here as a support, right here as a support. So, this is the idea right here. So, after I you know, implemented my key level structure right here to connect the swings low and the swings high right there. So, what I need to do next now is to Look out for the next swing low right there. You can see I have another swing low right here. Swing low right here. Which is this is support right here, is support right here, and then a support. I have a swing high right. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can figure that properly on your chart, on the chart. You can see right here, I got a swing low right here, swing high right here, swing low right here. Here is it right here? A swing low, swing low, swing low right here, and then it's a swing high right here, and then a swing high right here. So before I continue the class, I want to hear from you guys. If you guys can see my screen, if my screen is clear, I need to hear from you guys. So you can omit your speaker you no know, to give our response if you can see my screen on your from your side right there, if you can see my screen. So can you see my screen right there? Are you guys, can you see my screen? Are you seeing my screen right there? It's a uh, blood kind of, or crooked rather. What? Okay, what? yeah, I can, I can see it now. Okay, okay, good, okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna continue right now. So, okay, so what I'm doing right now is trying to connect a series of a swing low, swing slow, swings high, swing slow, swings high, swing slow. This is the idea right here, where I have the market moving up rally, a downward rally, a upward rally, a downward rally, a upward rally, a downward rally. Right here is a resistance, a resistance, a resistance, okay? So we try to connect this swings high, swings high, and there swings high right here. We got a support right here, a support right here. 
So we try to connect this support right here and then the support right here. So this is how you can construct your resistance and the support levels. So if you are joining us for the first time, a few are late to the class. So this is what we are trying to explain right here on the chat. So I'm gonna show you guys no continuation on this. So what I need to do next now is I wanna you know, try to connect more swings high and more swings low on this chart. And the right there, if you guys can figure out right there, I have a swing high right there, a swing high right there, a swing low right there, the swings low right here, the swings high right here, swings high right there. So what I need to do right now is to try to know, pick up my horizontal line and then try to connect these swings high right here, this zone. So I'm gonna zoom in, zoom in on my chart right now. You can see I was able to connect the swings high right here, even though the bar formation which formed right there cuts through the body right here through the line is still acceptable because we have no uh, series of rejection bar right here right here we have a series of rejection bar right here which you can as well regard it you know as our what as our swing style right there and then again i have no another swings high right here i got the rejection of bar right there by you no know, a what a bullish pin bar upward right there so i can regard this one right here as a swings low swings high, I got a swing high right here, I got a swing high right here, and then right here I got a swing high. So right here I got a swing low right here. So this is a valid swings high and a swings low we can connect on our chart. So the next one I need to look out for right now is a swing low right here. You can see here's a swing low, I got a swing high right here, and then I got a list of swings right here. So I need to implement my key level structure right to, to catch this swing low right here. I got a swing low right here, a swing high right here, and the right here, I got a rejection right here. The formation goes through the body right here. It's still acceptable. We can see how this one right here rejected price up. So this one is still valid. It's still valid even though we have price cutting through right here. So this one right here is still valid, it's still welcome. So the next structure I want to you know, implement my key level structure right on the chart is I got a swing low right here. You can see the swing low right here, got a swing low right here. And then I can try to implement my key level structure right there to catch this swing low right here. And then, okay. Okay, it's welcome right here. Can implement this right here. And then I try to catch the last swings low, that is the lowest low. That is the swing low of this currency pair. That is the lowest swing of this currency pair. That is in year 2020. So this is how you implement your key level structures on your trading charts. So what I want to show you guys now is a situation whereby you have a series of swings low and the swings high, which are very, very you no know, narrow, which are very close together. And this is the rules I always give you know, for traders is whenever you want to implement your key level structures, that is your support and resistance on your trading chart, what you need to look out for is the distance between the resistance and the support zones on your trading chart must be at least 150 pips away, 150 pips. So let's say for example, right here, you can see right here, I got a resistance, I got a key level structure right here, and I got another key level structure right there. So what I need to do is from this zone right here to this swing flow right here, the distance must be at least 150 pips. 150 pips. So that is the requirement. That is if you are trading from the higher time frame, that is from the daily time frame, and it all depends on the currency pairs you are trading. You know, some currency pairs, they, uh, they, there's some currency pairs, no, they have higher spread, and then if you are trading from the daily time frame, like let's say, for example, like the currency pairs on the British pound sterling against the New Zealand, against the Australian dollar, you know, the spread right here is much higher than when you are trading the major currency pairs. So on those currency pairs, you can exercise like 200 pips no, away of interval from the resistance to the support zone. So right here, I am on the British pound sterling against the Japanese yen. Actually, on some brokerage firm, the spread is much higher than the or major currency pair. So on the British pound starting against the Japanese yen as well, I can enjoy the 150 pips distance away. So this is what I'm trying to, to give an explanation. 
So let's say, for example, I want to implement my key level structures to mark a resistance zone and then a support zone on my trading charts. So what I need to do is to make sure that the distance between this zone right here and then the zone right here is at least what? 150 pips. 150 pips. That is what on major currency here, on major currency pairs, that is welcome, whereby we have no the GPP ULC, we have the maybe the Euro ULC, you know, get that, and then we have the ULC, you no know, Canada, we have no maybe the ULC or JPY. So these are examples you know, of currency pairs that you can exercise like 150 pips, no different. Whereby there are some other currency pairs whereby the spread are very high. And the right here, like we have you no know, the British pound sterling against the New Zealand, the British pound sterling against the you know, Australian dollar, you no know, stuff like that. And they like the you no know, we did like for so example on the British pound sterling right now. Next example, I got a British pound sterling against the New Zealand. We all know the currency pairs is very, very you no, know, very wide, you no, know, very high. So Right here on the British pound sterling against the New Zealand, you can make sure the distance of pips you're going to cover right here is at least like 200 pips. So I'm going to show you guys an example of what I mean on my trading chart on the chart of the British uh, against the British pound sterling against the New Zealand. Here is the British pound sterling against the New Zealand on my chart. And then you can see on the daily time frame right here, what I got right here is I got a swing high right here. I got a swing high right there yes a swing high right there a swing high right there a swing high right there i got a swing low right there a swing low right there i got a swing high right there so if i should measure from this distance from this zone right there downward to this zone right there this is almost no one that is almost what one thousand plus you can see the distance so in the case whereby I try to make a measurement, let's look out for a very small wide range right there where we can see something like a 150 pips. Okay, let's say for example, I wanna try to, to cash the swing right here and the swing low right here. We got a swing low right here. And then I wanna cash this swings high at this zone right here. And if I measure from this zone right here, I'm very sure this is gonna be much more than something like a 150, you can see that it's more than 150. So let's say, for example, I want to measure from this zone right there to this zone right there. So this means this is actually, let's say, for example, I want to measure from this swings I of this currency pairs right here. Let's measure from this swings I right here, swings I right here, and then I want to measure downward 150 pips. Let's see the distance right here, downward right here. You can see 150 pips is at this zone right here. 150 pips is at this zone right there. So it's very, very, very narrow you know, uh, distance from the resistance to the support level. So in a situation whereby you have something like this, you no, know, whereby you have something like this, you no, know, for you to execute profitable trade, it's going to be very, very, very difficult for you because you have a very, very narrow, you know, very close together support and resistance zone. So in this kind of you know, situation, I always advise you no know, traders to make sure there's a distance away more reasonable rooms, enough space for your trade to run into profit. So on the chart of the British pastor against New Zealand right now, if I want to initiate, you no, know, uh, uh, let's say a key level structure or a support level right there, a resistance level right there, I have to make sure, you no, know, I, I implement a, you no, know, a key level structure, which will be at least something like, let's measure from this zone right there, downward right there, at least closing to like 500 pips, 400 pips away. So, that is one of the you know, major factors. That's one of the major factors you have to consider whenever you want to trade all those minor currency pairs that has high spread. So the higher the spread, then the, you have to make sure you ensure a far away distance you know, from the key level structure of the resistance to the support zone. So let's get back to the British pound sterling against the New Zealand right here. So as a beginner in the forest market, I always advise beginners to stick with the major currency pairs due to the you know, low spread, high liquidity, and then it's you no, know, it's one of the, the, the 
currency pairs which is being traded by most traders in the world so whenever you trade on this currency pairs you have high tendency high probability to make fast quick profit unlike when you know know or trade the minor currency pairs no there is no less liquidity right there and there is higher spread right there so when you trade no it means you have to or reduce your position size and then this is one of the major factors whereby you know some traders know they get their fingers being burnt when they trade on the minor currency pairs they use the same size positions which they use to execute trades on the major currency pairs and then they use the same actual position size to execute trade on the minor currency pairs so whenever you want to trade the minor currency pairs like the british pound sterling against the canadian dollar British pastel against the New Zealand, New Zealand against the Canada, New Zealand against the no, switch, no, or Australian dollar against the switch, you have to reduce your position size because this minor currency pairs, they have high spread. So the higher the spread, then you have to lower your what? Your position size. So on the chart of the British pastel against the Japanese yen, you can see how we implemented you know, our key level structure right here. So we are able to know the right place for us to look for trade opportunity and then the right place for us to no initiate our stop loss, our entry zone, and then our take profit target. So I want to show you guys you know the distance between this high swings right here and then this next swings high right there. So let's make sure from the high swing right here of this you no know, currency pair right now to this swing low right here. You can see this one right here is 132, pips away. So at this zone right here now, it's for you to as a good trade right here, it's gonna be very, 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 very difficult. So what you need to do right here at this zone is for you to avoid no uh, more narrow distance that is a very close tight distance from resistance and support whereby you have difficulty to execute trade. What I need to do right here now is I can look out for if I can try to shift this no key level structure downward right here and then measure from the swing high right here if I can get like 150 pips Okay, 150 pips, then this is nice. So what I just know I've done right here is I try to cash the swing high right here and the swing high right there. Then I did what? No, I connected this zone together to form a resistance zone. So that is the idea right here. So you connect a series no of of swings high and the swing slow on your trading chart to what? To um, key level structures that you support on the resistance zone. So you guys know uh, inability for you to implement your key level structures at the right place on your chart, inability for you to implement you know, the key level structures to identify is resistance zones, the support zone, it's gonna cause you a lot of financial disaster. And this is one of the major reasons whereby in experienced traders they lose money in the forex market or whatever market you trade. Maybe you, maybe you trade the cryptocurrency market, you trade you no know, treasury base, you trade commodities, energy, you no know, metals, whatever market you trade, you need to learn how to implement resistance and support zone on your trading chart. It's very, very, very essential. So if you want to become a successful trader, that is very, 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 you know, important. Okay. So, oh, guys, and uh, I have different course on how you can implement key level structures on your trading chart, how you can, you know, implement this. There's a link at the, you know, uh, on my Telegram channel. If you're right there, you know, uh, I always you know old free forest trading class. That is on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday as well make sure you don't miss the class because uh how to construct support and resistance so it's very 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 important if you want to become a better trader you know an experienced trader a profitable trader in the market you have to learn how to what how to implement the key level structures at the right place in your trading chart how to implement the support and resistance in your trading chart. so to you know, summarize the class today to summarize what we have learned today in this class simply makes Whenever you want to implement your key level structure in your chart, you have to look for swings high, swings low, swings high, swings low, swings high, swings low. So then you connect your swings high, your swings high, your swings high, your swings high. Okay? Then your swings low, your swings low, your swings low. So you connect that as a resistance zone. So this is how you can connect your resistance and the support zone. So in a situation whereby you don't have a swings high, which Aligns at the same zone. Like, for example, we have a swing side like this, then we have another like this, we have another, we have another like this. We have a swing side right there, swing side right there, swing side right there. Trying to implement your key level structure right there is not the right way because actually you are cutting through a swings, a medium of a swings, 
a medium of a string writer. So this is very, very, very wrong. So uh, hang on, please. I need to respond to uh, an important message right there. There's some students, they have difficulty to join the class. So let me try to see if I can sort this out. Just give some uh, you know, 30 seconds so I can see if I can sort this out. They actually, I want to send them my YouTube channel link. They can connect through the class. Maybe they can go to the YouTube channel or links so they can get access to the class right here on the YouTube channel. So just give some seconds so I can respond to that. Okay, please, just some seconds, okay? Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to give a link to some students who are trying to connect to the class. Sorry. Okay, guys, I'm back. Okay, now we can connect to the class on YouTube. So if you also have no uh, difficulty. Maybe you have a difficulty to connect to the class and then you have a lot of no disconnection from your side right here. You can get through, uh, I send a link uh, on the Telegram channel, the YouTube channel, the YouTube link. So if you have difficulty to get to the class through the Zoom, no app, then you know, there's a YouTube channel link, which I left right here. You can join all me on their YouTube channel. So you, 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 you're gonna have access you know, to the free or class, okay? Good, so, uh, okay. Now, uh, there's something I wanna show you guys. That is uh, how to avoid your key level structures cutting through the bodies of candle on your charts. So, right here, let's point out, and then what you guys can figure out right here is, I wanna point out a structure out right here. Actually, if you have or, or have no, some experience or you are familiar with how to implement key level structures on your trading charts, you're gonna figure out that I have a key level structures which cuts through the body of a candle right here. It cuts through the body of a candle right here. So the question I received from or one of my VIP students it was yesterday, I held a class, a live webinar with them in a private classroom. And then a student asked me, I gave a chat, especially the, I gave this chat as an example as well. He asked me, said, sir, yo, sir, you said, whenever we are trying to construct our key level structures, our key level structures line shouldn't cut through the body. But right here on the chart right here, your key level structure is cutting through a body on the chart right there. So why is that no happening? Is it not wrong at this zone right here? So I'm gonna explain why it is not wrong as well right here. So this is the idea behind construction of the key levels on your trading chart. So whenever you wanna construct a key level on the trading chart, what you need to figure out, what you need to find out is your key level structures must try to connect a series of swings high, swings low, of bar connection, of bar formation, I mean, bar formation. Let's say for example right here now, you can see right here, I got uh, a swing low right here, of this bar formation right here. I got a swing high right here. I got a swing high right here. This is the first touch right here. I got another second touch right here. And then I got a third, touch right here. So here's a swing low right here, a swing low right here. And then I got a swing high right here. I got a swing high right here, okay? So my key level connected series of highs of swing. So whenever you are constructing your key levels and your key levels can connect at least two, three, four swings, 
close within the same range. So if your key levels extend to the next swings high, is what I'm trying to explain on the white chart. Let's give this example on the white chart, on the whiteboard right here. So let's say, for example, right here, I got a swing high right here, right? I got a swing low, I got a swing high right here, I got a swing low right here, and then I got a swing high right here, I got a swing low right here, I got a swing high right here, I got a swing low right here, I got a swing high, I got a swing low down, and I got a swing high. So now let's connect our key level structure right here. So I wanna put, implement my key level structure right here. So we can see the first touch right here. Here's the first touch right here. Here comes the second touch right here. There's a third touch right here, the fourth touch right here. And what you guys can figure out at this one right here is, no price, this, we are a body right here. That is my key level horizontal lines cause through uh, a body of a candle right here. You can see how we have you no know, swing snow passing through this you no know, horizontal lines right here. So some traders is the point whereby they get confused. They start thinking, is this right? Is this wrong? Should I construct my key level? Are these zones? No, key level is cutting through the body. So whenever you try to construct your key levels, and your key levels can successfully connect at least two or three swings of highs of or a low. If your key level goes through the next swing through a body, no, you can neglect that. It's still right because you don't expect price to keep on moving in the same range. In the same range, there must be a point whereby you have a swing high, a swing low, and the price will break out of a swing high to the to have another word and that swing to the upside or to the downside. So whenever you have a series of consecutive swings high of two no swings or three swings, and then the next swing, your key level structure pass, no, cross through or the body, you can neglect that, it's still right. So you can see right here, I have a series of you no know, swings whereby I was able to connect my horizontal lines to connect these swings high and these swings low. That right here, I got a swings high right here. And the right here, I got a series two swings lows right here. This is the third right here. Then here comes the fourth swing lows right here. You get that? Right now on this chart, I got a swing high one formation right here. I got a swing low two formation right here. I got a swing low three formation right here. I got a swing low four formation right here. So this is how you can connect your swings no high with a key level structure. So I'm gonna get back on the chart of the British pound sterling against the Japanese yen, so you guys can figure out right here on the chart. So you can figure out right here. You know, I got a swings high right here. I got a swing high right. Here. I'm gonna point out with my highlighter right there. So I got a swing. High right air, I got a swing high right air. It's the you no know, horizontal line, you no know, cuts through the body of country formation right there. Then I got a swing low right there. For the fact I got a swing low right there, I got a swing high right there, I got a swing high right there. This key levels is still valid. For the fact I have these key levels you no know, connecting more swings highs than the zones of cutting through the body right here. You no, know, this is a topic which has to be treated you no know, properly. So I'm gonna keep on you no know, organizing more class on how you can connect key level structures you know, to represent point of interest in your trading chart. And then right here you can see right here the key level structure cuts through my body of a candle right here. And I'm gonna zoom in on this chart so you guys can figure out what has actually happened right here. And I'm gonna show you guys right here. You can see on this chart right there, after I connected a series of a swings high and a swings low right here on my chart, you can figure out right there, I got a swings high right here, I got a swings high right, I got a swing low right here. And the body formation right here goes through my horizontal key level structure right here. So I got a swing right here, I got a swing right here, I got a swing low right here. And then right here, you can figure out right here, the horizontal lines cut through my bullish formation bar right here. You can see the bullish formation bar right here. And the next candle next to this bullish bar formation, what did we see? What can we figure out right here? This was a bullish pin bar. A bullish pin bar which was being reversed, which was being rejected by a bullish prayer on the key level structures which act on these horizontal lines right there. So this is the importance, the significance when you implement your key level structures on your trading chart. You can see right here, this bullish pin bar now gave us a new validation that this key level structure is a valid key level structure, and then now it's rejected prior to the upward trend. And then second point right there is we can figure out how this bullish pin bar right here broke a resistance zone with a high momentum. 
you can figure out right here there's a momentum right there so whenever so you have a key level structure in your chart, you have it at the resistance, at the swing high, at the swing low. One of the major factors, one of the major signals you should look out for is whenever price wanna break out of this key level structure, you tend to experience high volatility of you no know, market, you no, know, you tend to uh, figure out you no know, momentum, you no know, strong momentum that it is for a resistance or a support zone, a key level structure to be broken, there is much force, you no. Know, which needs to break this zone. It's just as if a rocket which will not be projected from the surface of the Earth into the space, you need more force to overcome the force of gravity. So whenever you price want to break out of a key level structure, there's a more momentum which is needed for price to break out of this zone. So that is one of the major reasons whether you see good momentum, volume, breaking through this zone. And then the next coming right here, you can see how this zone rejected price with a price cap, what a bullish pin bar. In my previous class, which I, in the class which I shared with the members that was uh, last week, here yeah, Saturday, I discussed about some of the signal bar formation of a bullish pin bar, what makes a bullish pin bar to be a reliable bullish pin bar. If you missed this class, uh, that was the last class, I got a link on the Telegram channel. You can go through the no link, whereby you can get access to the your class right here. So here comes the bullish pin bar, which rejected right here, then which validated this key level structures right there. So in the next class, I'm gonna continue on how you can you know construct key level structures from your trading charts at the support and the resistance soon. So this class actually is 45 minutes class. So the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna use this to answer questions. No answer, no question. You guys can ask me questions in relation to the financial market. Maybe you trade stocks, no cryptocurrency, Forex, whatever market you trade, uh, question relation to trading. And if there's anything you don't understand right in this class today, you can ask me a question so I can go through again, okay? So, time for question. Time for question. Is there any time, is there any question? You guys have a question, you have a question you wanna ask, you understand what has been taught today in the class. If you don't understand, let me know. There's a chat box, if you wanna chat me privately, you wanna chat me privately, there's a chat box at the bottom of your mobile device or your laptop, you can chat me right here. If you don't wanna all the members of the class to hear what you wanna ask me, just chat me. And if you feel comfortable to speak to ask a question, you can ask a question so we can treat it together, you know? So, any question? Has your question? I'm waiting for questions. Yes. Good evening. Hello. Yeah. Good. Good evening. Hello, good good evening. evening. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 So yeah. As, yeah. You regards, you as regards the resistance, like the key support levels. When we're drawing it, yeah. does it have to be at the end of the week? That's that rejection point, or just at the end of when the candle closes, that's the body of the candle closes. Okay, that's a good question. That's a good question. You know, actually, if you want to draw a key level structures, maybe it's a support, maybe it's a resistance zone, what you need to put into consideration is the highest swings of your of that candle formation which you are trying to connect the points you know if you want to construct let's say for example right here like i have right here there are actually there are different kind of kind of variations which you're going to figure out on your trading chart so don't expect all kind of formations to form the right way or the same kind of formations on your charts let's say for example right here i got no uh bullish pin bar right here and then I got, uh, okay, I got this candle right here. And then I got another candle right here. So right here, this is the close of this candle right here, because this is a bullish candle, right? And the right here, I got, a bullish pin bar, and the right here, I got a bullish bar with a bearish reversal. So what you need to do right here is try as much as possible to make sure you connect your key level structures to avoid cutting through more bodies of candle formations. So what you need to do right here is try to connect the swings eye of this bar right here, and then bar right here, 
and then the edge of this formation right here. So don't expect your candle formations to form the same way, like a well-defined candle with uh, high wicks. Because actually some candle right here, I'm gonna show you an example on the chart. Let's figure out, let's look at this candle formation right here. Okay, I'm gonna figure out. Okay, good. Here is a good example right here. Can you guys see the screen properly? Can you see the screen properly right there? Can you guys see the screen properly? Can you see it right there? Because I want to give answers to the question being asked. Yes, we can see the screen. Okay. Right here, I got a swing high. Right here, I got a swing high. Right here, I got a candle yeah. formation cutting through this level right here. You can see I have, a, for the fact, I have a swing high right here. I have another swing high right here. We can make, see the distance of the range right here, the distance from this swing right here to the next swing high right here. I connected this zone right here with this zone right here. Then on my way going with the horizontal line, I got a body right here. So I cut through this body, cutting through this body, I was able to catch another swing low right here. So for the fact that there's a swing low in line with the same level of the swing high right here and a low right here, for me to cut through this body, it is not wrong, it is acceptable. But let's say for example, I got a swing high right here, a swing high right here, and then next again, I got a shopping market over a long range of time right there. Then I can connect a swing right there because I, I'm gonna show you an example. Let's, I, I think I got an example right here. I'm gonna show you some examples on one of the, I got, I think I got some currency pairs right here, which I can use as an example. I uh, got you know, some currency markets. And there's something I wanna show you guys is construction, you no know, construction of your key levels in your charts actually works with liquid market. That is most of the time it works with markets that are liquid. That is a major currency pairs. I wanna show you guys, I have an example of a currency pair right here, which is not a trending market. I wanna show you guys so you guys can figure out, I think I have that on the switch, on the switch Japanese yen. Is it on the switch? Okay, good. Yeah, it's an example right here on my chart. I'm gonna remove this box right here. Right here, you can see, I got a swing high right here. Right here, I got a rejection bar right there for an upward rally right here. Right here, I got a swing low right here, a swing low right here. Now, what can you guys figure out at this zone? There's a choppy market right here. So which means this key level structure is only active at this zone, active at this zone, active at this zone, and then active at this zone right here. So for the fact this price action right there is not respecting this key level structure right here, it means this key level structure right here is no more active right here. You can see how price successfully bounced through this medium series of time. You can see our price respected it right here, right here. So when constructing your key level structures, what you need to look out for is swings high and swings low. In a market whereby you will find it difficult to figure out swings high and the swings low, whereby you start looking out for where the swing side, whether you have difficulty to look at, to get the swings high and the swings low. The best thing is to try to skip that zone. Like here's an, another example right here now. We have a swing right there. You can see we have a series of what? Choppy market right there. Price is not respecting even of a room right here to construct our key levels. So whenever you are constructing your key levels, the best zone to no implement your horizontal line is at the swing low of a trend. When you have a swing high, you have a swing slow. You have a high right here. Then you have a 
what? High, low. That is an upward trend. So you try to figure out you know, a swing low, a swing high. So when you get a formation of a swing high, like we did that right there, here's a swing high, a swing low, right? A swing high, a swing low. So when you figure out a swing high, a swing low, what you need to do next is now study the formation of the tip of the candle, which forms your highs. Here is my high. 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 Here is my low. You can see. So what I need to do right now is to study at the point of this zone. Study at the point of this zone. 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 So. To summarize this, your key level structures can cut through the body of a candle, but it must not cut more, more it must not cut as much body of a candle and you can figure out swings high and swings close to connect to the trend that is the pass on your chart. So if let's say for example you have a situation whereby you have those two swings highs and the swings two swings low and then you have a series of you no know, or your key levels cutting through your bodies then it means that point is not a good zone for you to construct your key level zone so it means you have to neglect that zone and move to a mid trend market okay so your key level can cut through the wick and the body of a candle but try as much as possible to avoid cutting too much of body. And the situation whereby you can figure out your key levels cut through more than two, three, four consecutive or two, three consecutive pass, body of pass on your chart, then it means that level is not a real reference for you to, a reference zone whereby you can implement your key level structure on your chart. So I don't know what that question, you didn't know, specify your name. So. Is the answer okay for your question or you still need more enlightenment? Hello. It's okay from what I understood. He said it's best if it's caught at the week or if it's still caught at the body. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, if it's caught through the body. Hello, Hello. go on. I can hear you. Go on. I can hear you. Go on. Hello, I can hear you. Go so on. If it's caused to the body, then okay. If it's caused to the body, what you just need to do is verify at other uh, yes. if the other swing high and then swing low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if yeah, it's a good. ranging market, you you should um you shouldn't you, you shouldn't Neglect. trust that support. Yes, yes, for yes. That, for that yes, point, right. Yes, right. So make sure whenever you want to construct your key level structure, make sure you figure out a healthy, trendy market. A market whereby you have, you can see right here now on the chart of the switch against the Japanese here now, you know, we can't construct, we can't compare the trend we have right here on the switch yen right here with the trend we have on the British pound sterling against the Japanese yen. I'm going to move right now on the British pound sterling against the Japanese yen. Now on the British pound sterling against Japanese yen right here now, you can see the market we have right here, it's in a very LD, well trending market. You can see right here is swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, consolidation phase, swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, a massive rally down, swing high, swing low. You can see this market is a defined well trending market. So it's very easy for us to construct our key levels. So in the market whereby you have difficulty to construct your key levels, what you need to do is move up to the next swing whereby you can figure out you no know, consecutive well defined swings high and swings low to construct your key levels. And then if your key levels cause through a body, make sure the number of swings high you have is more than the number of touches through your body of candle formation. If the body touches is more than the swing high, then leave that zone and you no know, move to the next swings or the next currency pairs. You can have a well-defined trending market. So, any other question? You have another question? We have question. If you have a question, please ask your question. In the next two minutes, we're gonna wrap up this no class. We're gonna wrap up things. So, if you have a question, you can ask a question. Yes, we have another question. And then if you haven't subscribed, 
Okay, 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 go on. Ask your question, so ask your question. You said, it's best. you said it's best to trade on the daily time frame. But what if like um, for a newbie now, you're, you're like scalping, so to say, drawing your, drawing your support levels, will the daily time frame still help you? Okay, if you mean if you are a scalper, right? You scalp, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Well, I don't believe in scalping. And then my best advice for beginners in the market is trying to scalp is the fastest way to blow your account, to burn your money. As a beginner in the forest market, the best time frame to stick to is the higher time frame. So that's the fastest means we are buying experience without beginners in the market, they get you know, they burn their resources. So as a beginner, the best thing I would advise you is stick to the daily and the weekly charts. The higher the go, you go, the more defined, well, strong, you no know, trading signal, fast formation, key level structures, trending market, reliable swans. You figure out, you find. So trying to trade on the lower time frame, you know, you have a lot of noise, a lot of fake breakout, a lot of fake setup, a lot of weak support resistance, and a lot of minor key level structures. So. Trading on the higher time frame, it's what can give you a winning you no know, edge and giving you a high profitable trade. Okay? So try to start trading on the higher time frame. When you trade on the higher time frame, you have more time for your trading analysis. You have more time to relax, to cross check your trading decision, to figure out if it is right, no trading decision, if it's conformed to your trading rules and analysis. Okay? I don't believe in scalping. Actually, I'm a day trader and a swing trader. So I trade from the four hour to the daily chart to the weekly chart. So I don't trade. And then you can see right here on my screen right there, I don't have five minutes or 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 30 minutes. My time frame start from one hour to the monthly chart. So I don't use that. So I don't believe in scalping. Actually, what works for me may not work for you. But the best advice I can give for beginners is stick to the higher time frame. Okay? okay. Any other question? You. You're welcome. Any other question? Any other question before I hand the class? Any other question? Do you have a question before I end the class? And then for those of you guys who have been asking, you want my line, you want to shout with me, there's a question you want to ask me, stuff like that, no. Uh, on the Telegram channel, I have my link, I have my line right there. I don't, I don't accept calls, so I don't know, have time for call. You can just shout me on my WhatsApp line, there's my, line right there at the end of this class now i'm gonna give my line right there you can chat me and then if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel make sure you subscribe because i do release no two at least two three times in a week i do release no free no highly educative forest trading contents right there it's gonna be helpful for you okay guys so that is all guys make sure you attend the next class which is gonna be thursday and then um, make sure you share this you no know, class, you no know, opportunity with your friends, with other traders who's gonna benefit from this, you no know, as well. So make sure any trade you wanna you know, take, any trading decision, make sure you, it conforms to your trading rules. I hope you guys have trading rules. Do you guys have trading rules? Do you have trading rules? Trading rules, you're just gonna check before you take a trade. I got a trading rules right here. This is my trading rule before I take any trade on my chart. This is what I check. I figure out, can you guys see this on my chart? Here are my list of my trading rules. These are what I check before I take a trade, okay? Make sure you have a trading rules as well. So you cross check this, this is gonna help you to become a disciplined you no know, trader in the market. It's not about how much money you make today that's gonna make you profitable, but it's how consistent can you make profit and defend your profit, withdraw your money, and then we reinvest it in order, you no know, source of income. So thank you guys, do have a wonderful day, night's rest, and then if it's day right here, morning right here, I wish you a beautiful day. So guys, that is all. Have a wonderful time. Bye.